Hello YouTube! Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to show you how to make your very own Minecraft 1.7.7 bucket server. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a folder on your desktop. Call it whatever you want, but just make sure that you know that that's going to be the folder where all the server files are going to be put into. Second thing you're going to want to do is open up Internet Explorer and go to this link right here. The links will be in the description. Go ahead and download, click this button, download the spigot jar file 1.7.5. Don't worry, 1.7.5 works with 1.7.7. The 1.7 and 1.7.7 and 1.7.6 were not that big of an update, so nothing to worry about too much. Go ahead and download the file and put it into this folder, the folder that you created on your desktop. Once you have that, drag that file, the spigot jar file, into here. Make sure you rename the spigot jar file so it just says spigot and nothing else at the end. So it just says spigot, S-P-I-G-O-T, like that, right there. Okay, and next thing we're going to do is make a run bat file like this, this thingy right there. So what you need to do is right click on your desktop, go to new, um, and then go to text document, open the text document. And then paste in this code right here. This code will be in the description. Now you're going to see XMX and XMS. XMX is the maximum amount of RAM that your server will use. XMS is the minimum. You can go ahead and change those as you please. I would just leave this like this for now because this is just testing out stuff. Save the change. Oh wait, actually don't exit out. What you're going to want to do is go to File, Save As, and then you're going to want to save it as something you're going to remember what it, what it is. So you type in Run, then at the end add a period, and then the B-A-T, you know, like a bat. And make sure it's set to all file types, um, and then go ahead and save it. And there you go. You just now created your run bat file right here. Drag that into your folder. Uh, mine's already there, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these two. Drag it into this folder. And once you have the spigot jar file and the run bat file into the same folder, go ahead and double click the run bat file. It'll make all these folders. Um, like the plugins folder, the log file, the op text file, plugins, stuff like that. And it'll make the world. You will get a few errors, that's totally normal, normal, don't worry about it. So let that load up here. And while it's doing that, we're going to go ahead and port forward. So if you're on Windows 8, just go to search and type in run. If you're on Windows 7, just go to... Start menu and type in slash run. Um, and then you type in cmd. Opens up a command prompt like so. You type in ip config. And when you type in that, press enter. You're going to want to look for your default gateway and ipv4. Those are the two number sets of numbers you will need. So write those numbers down. Then once you have those written down, you can go ahead and exit like so. And then what you're going to want to do is go into the web browser and type in the default gateway. Mine was 10.0.0.1. Okay, now you must log into your router. Best way you can do this is using the username. Sometimes it's admin, um, but if your parents changed it or whatever, you might have to change it. Um, could be admin 
for the username. It could be password for the password, perhaps. You're just going to have to figure it out or ask your parents what they changed it to. And once you're logged into your router, you're going to have to look for port forwarding, port triggering, virtual servers, or sometimes it might be under advanced, kind of like how mine is. And then you're going to want to create a new session or a new port to open. And once you do that, you're basically going to want to set it up like so. You're going to want to port for the, uh, the port number is 25565. You're going to want to put for the server IP address, the IPv4. And for the service type, you want TCP and UDP. Make sure you do both. Um, and then give it a title or whatever. All port, all uh, routers look different, so yours will not look like mine. Save changes. You may or may not have to restart the router for the changes to take place. It just depends on the make and model. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and go to Google and type in IP Chicken or what's my IP and they will bring up a website click on that very first website and then give that IP to all your friends or whoever you want to join your server that's how they will be joining the server and now we can go ahead and start up Minecraft and join our server you will not be joining using the IP that you give other people because it's hosted on your computer you will be joining through the local host and I'll show you once this loads up here how to go ahead and do that so we have right here click on edit local host all one word just click OK double click it and you're in the game well it's logging in there now you're in the game, and I started with a wooden axe. Terrific. Well, hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and favorite. And I'll see you around next time. Bye.